Welcome to the Written Realms World Editor. In this video, we are going to show you how to create rooms, manage them, and populate them with items and mobs. To create a world, scroll down to the bottom of the Worlds column in the lobby and click Create World. Enter the name of your world and click Create. This is the room editing screen. It is where a room's information is managed and also where you can create new rooms. The first room was created automatically with the name Starting Room indicated in yellow. To change it, click the Edit button and enter a new name. There are other important fields on this screen. The coordinates indicate the position of the room on the map. Changing them will move the room. The zone is the group of rooms that this room belongs to. Zones are an organizational tool we will cover shortly. The room type determines the color of the room, as well as how many moves it costs to traverse it. For example, roads are cheaper on moves than mountains. The description field indicates how the room will be described when a player walks into it or looks at it. The notes are notes visible only to builders. The description of the room can also be edited with the Edit Description link, which pops a full screen modal with nothing but that field. This is helpful for writing longer descriptions, especially on a mobile phone. To create a room, click the Create New Room action in the direction that you want it. The X coordinate of the room is one higher than the starting room since it is to the east. If we create a room to the north, it will increase its Y coordinate by one. To move a room, change its coordinates. As a tip, you can use the E hotkey to bring up the room editing dialog with a single keystroke. To edit a different room, simply click it on the map. To connect two rooms together, click the Link Room action, which appears instead of the Create New Room action when two rooms are adjacent. To remove the exit between two rooms, click the Unlink Room action. To create a one-way exit, click on the plus circle next to the action and select Make One Way. To convert it back to a two-way exit, Click on the plus circle and select Make Two-Way. You can also click Unlink followed by Link. We are now going to add a server-controlled character into this room. Let's name it On The Road so that we can differentiate it from the other untitled rooms. On the horizontal nav bar where the room name is highlighted in white, click on A New World to the left. This takes you to the world screen. On the left side, click on Mobs. On the upper right hand corner, click Add. Many of the fields have green question marks next to them. Hovering over them displays help entries that give background information on each field. By default, the stats of a mob are automatically generated. To overwrite them, uncheck the Use Default Stats checkbox and click Edit Stats. To return to the default stats for a mob of that level, click Suggest Stats or recheck the Use Default Stats. Under the mob's basic information, we can configure how the mob is described to other characters when they enter its room, when they look at it, as well as which keywords allow it to be interacted with. You can also define how much gold is given to players who kill this mob by editing its gold drop-down value. Humanoids by default load a certain amount of gold based on their level, and non-humanoids do not, but this can be overwritten here. Reactions are commands that a mob will execute under certain conditions. For example, 
if another character enters their room, says a particular word, or hands them an item. A mop template can be configured to load certain items when it is spawned. The loaded items can be randomly generated by checking the Load Random Items checkbox. The mob can also load templated items by clicking on the Add Inventory Item button. Merchants can also sell items. To make a mob a merchant, add items to its merchant inventory. Finally, once you are ready to load a mob, locate the Load Mob in Room button. This will load the mob in the last room that you viewed, indicated on the right-hand side of the navbar. You have now created a room for this mob to be loaded into the room. Each rule belongs to a loader, and loaders are grouped by zones. Notice that the middle element of the navbar is now selected, indicated we are managing a zone component. Each rule loads a template, which can be a mob or an item. Each template is loaded into a particular target, which can be a specific room, a random room within a zone, a random room within a path, or the output of a previous rule. One reason you might want to use the output of a previous rule is to load an item into a mob for one specific load, but not for every single load of that mob. We'd like to do this here, but first we have to create an item. Click back on the world's name in the navbar, then click on Items. Click Add in the upper right-hand corner. When naming items, be sure to start with a lowercase article so that the game can construct correct sentences when you pick them up. It will auto-capitalize the first letter when needed. The item type determines some of its behavior. Here, we are going to create a weapon, so we want the equipable type. Equipped items can grant a stats bonus, and a weapon or armor piece that does so is referred to as imbued. It will appear yellow in-game. The quality of an item compared to a randomly rolled item of the same level is indicated by the item power field. Items that are at 120% or greater become enchanted, displaying in orange. Enchanted weapons deal more damage and enchanted armor grants more armor. The cost of an item determines how much gold a merchant will give you when buying it from you. When selling, a merchant charges twice the cost, unless it is the last item that was sold, which works as a free buyback mechanism for an accidental purchase. If the item is a weapon, you can set its hit message in the equipment section. The first person hit message is what you will see when you are carrying an attack on a target with that weapon and the third person hit message is what you will see when another character carries out an attack. Now that we have added the item, we can go back to the loader to add it. Click on the zone in the navbar, then select Loads, then edit the details of the loader. We can now add this sword and load it into the output of the previous rule, which is the soldier. The soldier will now always load with the sword equipped. Note that this will only be true for soldiers loaded by this loader. A soldier loaded elsewhere by a different loader will not include the sword. This is the difference between loading an item via loader versus via the mob template's inventory. 
Loaders can also be used to load items and mobs in a random room within a zone or a path. In addition to the sword loading on the soldier, let's add another sword that loads somewhere on the ground. Click Add, and then select the sword template. Notice that the rule targets the whole zone, which means that the sword could load in any of the rooms that belong to this zone. If a path were selected instead, the item would spawn in any of the rooms that belong to that path. By default, a loader will spawn templates every time it runs, which is every 15 seconds. If you pick up the sword from the ground, the loader will place another one. This can be disabled by unchecking the respawns checkbox, or by specifying a respawn time. At some point, you will want to break your world up into more than one zone. To do this, you first have to create a new zone, then assign the desired rooms to that zone. Click back on the world's name in the nav bar, then click on Zones. Click Add in the upper right hand corner, enter the name of the zone, and click Save Changes. Go back to the room view by clicking on the right side of the nav bar, and then edit the room you want to move to in the new zone. Search for the forest in the zone field, select it, and then click Save. Repeat this process for other rooms you want to transfer to this zone. You now know how to manage rooms, mobs, items, loaders, and zones. If you have questions with world editor usage, find us on Discord by going to our front page, scrolling all the way to the bottom, and clicking the purple icon on the left.